Here's the scenario. You have bought something, stock or crypto, but it has dropped and then dropped some more and you have decided I'm gonna hold and hope that the price goes back up so I can get to break even or make a little bit of money. But I want you to consider this math because the math, while very easy, it hides in plain sight and I can understand why people sort of just make a false jump in mathematical logic to the wrong conclusion because at the surface you would think, okay, that's what it is but it's not. And the reality of the matter is the math is now completely working against you. So before you go into hold and hope mode, let's make sure you are aware of this very, very basic but important math. So I got a comment that says, two of my friends are stuck and they think they can't get out now because they're down 70%. I don't know what to make out of it. Well, hey, thank you for asking and sparking this video, which is a very important a topic. So yeah, let's talk about what to make out of it. But here's the premise. This person's friends are down 70%. So 70% is what they are down. Now, quick question here and be honest with yourself or better yet comment in the, in the comment section before you hear the answers to hold yourself accountable. But how much do, does this friend or do the friends need to make? They're down 70%. So what is your answer to that? How much do they need to make? 70%? Is that what you're thinking? Again, be honest. If you're down 70%, you need to make 70% to get back to break even. The answer is no, you need to make a whole lot more than 70%. So we will have to assume some things, but we do have the key number, which is that 70%. So let's just say that this person's friends bought for $10. Well, we know that if they're down 70%, that that implies that as of right now, whatever the stock is at, the current value of the stock is at $3. Because if you bought, for 10, you're down 70%. That would imply that the current price where they're at is $3. Maybe you're already seeing the problem here with the math and why it's not 70%. But if you haven't, I wanna just walk, let's introduce a couple more people into the story here. So we have the people that are 70% down, but now let's talk about a couple other people. So I wanna introduce you to Tom. And Tom right here, we'll just call him T, yeah, it's not too long. We'll just spell it out. So Tom is gonna, you know, sees this and he buys for three dollars. So Tom is bought for three dollars, and then let's say that you know what the price starts to recover, and the price goes up to right here, and now all of a sudden the price is at six dollars. And from Tom's perspective, he's thinking, "Wow, this is fantastic." My question to you is, how much is Tom up at $6? Well, if you're saying, well, he doubled in price, therefore Tom's up 100%. And because Tom is not a greedy savage, he is going to sell. Now, when he sells, what is he doing against the other person's friends that need the price to get up to $10? Well, he has created, in technical jargon, what is known as a resistance. Resistance is where sellers hang out at. Resistance is where a lot of people want to sell. In other words, he is now creating a problem for the price to be able to get back up to $10. Do you understand that? Because from his point of view, he just made 100%. But from the people that needed to get back up to $10, well, yeah, the price has moved 100% from where they're at right now. But for their angle, that doesn't matter yet because they're still $4 away per share from getting up to break even, which is again, up here. But from Tom's point of view, he wants to sell, which has now created a resistance. So in other words, it is going to require way more than 70%. It's gonna require over 200% to get back to break even because three to six is 100% and then another up to nine is 200% and then you got a little bit more. But the reason why that's so tricky is because you have to think about other people's perspectives. Tom's perspective by buying at three, by the time it gets up to six, hey, why, why would I keep holding? I'm gonna sell and create that resistance. I'm gonna now all of a sudden create friction of the price trying to get back up to that much. And Tom is just a single person. I could have introduced other people that are buying at different ways or different angles and maybe somebody's up 50%, maybe somebody's up uh, you know, 25%. But you have all these people that they're buying at the $3 mark or $4 mark. And when you're sitting up there at $10 when that's your entry point, I mean, you're gonna be battling against all these other people that are looking at triple digit gains before you're even close to break even. And that's the problem. 
is when prices drop and drop and drop in order to get back up, it's not the amount you're down. So just because you're down 70%, the price does not have to move 70% to get break even. It's gotta move up a whole lot more. And that's very difficult to do for the reasons just explained here. So because Tom has created this resistance, the price drops down here, but this time it only goes down to let's just call it $4. So price comes down here to $4. And once again, we have a, somebody else. And in this situation, we'll put a little skirt on her. There we go. I guess it's a see-through skirt, not very wise, but we have Daisy. So Daisy says, you know what? I like it for whatever reason, I'm gonna buy it $4. The price then heads up to eight. Now you see probably where I'm going with this, but from Daisy's reference point, what is she now at? Well, she's thinking, wow, at $8, I bought it at four, that's a 100% move. I'm, not, I'm no greedy savage, I wanna sell. So what did she just do? Well, she just added in another resistance point. And then this goes on and on and on. You have all these people that are buying less than that $10 mark and they're getting better returns. They're deciding to sell. They were creating resistance levels. And it's just truly like trying to go up a mountain with concrete boots on and this mountain has ice on it. And while not impossible, so I'm not saying that the price can't ever make a recovery. I'm just saying strictly mathematically speaking, I mean, the math is just simply against you because you have all these people that are getting better entry points. They're gonna be incentivized to sell sooner before you even get back to break even, creating resistance levels. You get the point. So before you go and make that decision, I'm going into hold and hope mode. Remember, this is the math that you are deciding I'm gonna let work against me. And that's what, as far as I'm concerned, a very, very risky spot to be in and why ultimately hold and hope is going to crush people's accounts and what will crush yours if you do it enough. I'm not making the claim that holding and hoping never works. I'm just saying that you have a lot of things against you and when it doesn't work, it can wipe out an account, it can wipe out a lot of gains, it can do a whole lot of damage. So please, before you hold and hope, just consider this math. And out of curiosity, did you get the question right? Be honest, was your answer 70% when I asked the question earlier? Uh, mine would have been, if I'm being brutally honest, because in my mind, I would have just jumped in logic and said, oh yeah, if you're down 70%, okay, you just gotta go up 70%. I, like I said, I, I would have answered that there because it's a, a very simplistic way for your mind to just make the, the conclusion, but it's just a false conclusion. But yeah, like I said, let me know down below. But yes, before you hold and hope, consider this math. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.